Hi, everybody. Please give us a few more moments to make sure that all families have been able to log in, and we'll get started in a few moments. Hi, everybody. Please give us a few more moments to make sure that all families have been able to successfully log in, and we'll get started shortly. Hi, everybody. Please give us a few more moments to make sure that all families have been able to log in, um, and then we'll get started in just a, just a second. Hi, everybody. My name is Ronaldo Lunagakid, and I want to welcome you to the final webinar in our Summer 2022 Family Webinar Series. Tonight, I'm joined by my colleagues, Catherine Pei, Director of Student Transitions and Family Programs, and Will Andrews, Associate Director of Housing Operations. We are excited that you've, been, uh, that you've chosen to join us for tonight's conversation. Some information before we get started. First, we want to make sure you know how to submit questions during this webinar. You will notice that we've given you the ability to ask questions via the Q&A feature. Um, our professional staff within Student Transitions and Family Programs are helping to feed the, field these questions. To make sure that you know how to use the Q&A feature, please share the place that you're watching from and we'll name a few of them on air live. While you do that, we will be showing a PowerPoint created by our panelists during tonight's webinar. However, if you prefer to download this PowerPoint and follow along on your own, please use the link that we just shared in the chat. As a note, in the chat feature, we will be sharing links and email addresses for the duration of the webinar. Third, this webinar is being recorded live. Next week, it will be uploaded to the families.wustol.edu website. Lastly, in a moment, we will hear from our panelists about move-in day and Bear Beginnings Fall Welcome. If something they say sparks a question, don't forget to send it to us using the Q&A feature. After the presentation, we will move into the question and answer portion of the evening. Before passing things along, I want to share some of the places people are joining us from. We have families tuning in from Sarasota, Florida, South Lake, Texas, and Walla Walla, Washington, among many other locations. Now, since I know that you all want to hear more about Move-In Day and Bear Beginnings Fall Welcome, I will turn it over to our panelists, beginning with Will. Great, thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Willie Andrews and Director of Operations. So we'll get started. So we're really excited for you all to move in. Um, what's going to be really important first is that you log into our housing portal by like logging in through WebStack to check your move in time, your check in time. That's really important because to help control the flow, flow of traffic um, and the, have, to ensure that families have a uh, easy transition moving on, please stick to your move-in time. Uh, you should also make sure you confirm that you've, submit, you've submitted your student photo ID and your immunization records. Any student who has not submitted these will find a delay in the check-in process. Students should also review our residential life policies and procedures, which I uh, believe you can also find on our website um, it was also part of the moving guide that will be coming out pretty soon, which will have some important information and policies. Um, you should also finish packing. And then again, enjoy your final moments 
uh, with your student prior to them um, coming to St. Louis and moving into the residential facilities. Again, the important piece I want to reiterate is arriving during your check-in time. Don't arrive before. Um, if your time is scheduled for 9.30, we ask that you arrive at 9.30, not at 8 o'clock. Um, again, we have plenty of uh, staff prepared, moving assistance prepared to assist you in uh, getting you situated to your room. Uh, but again, we really want you to focus on arriving during your designated time. Uh, once you arrive to campus, those who are driving or if you are taking a Uber, shuttle or any of those pieces, you're going to arrive at our temporary parking spot, which is in our Simon parking lot. From there, families will be, um, and their loved ones will be asked to stay in the car, only the students going to enter our check-in uh, site. And you wanna make sure that your student brings the, your government ID to check in at the Danforth University Center. Um, we also want to make sure, uh, just again, we'll have movers and um, in place and also um, staff to assist with the move in. But it's really important to label your items um, with your first and your last name, the building, and your room number. And all of that information can be found on the housing portal. Um, so, again, if it's with some blue tape, some stickies, or something that will stay placed on your items so that um, I always like to think, think of a cruise ship. You label all of your items. Once you arrive, you're going to place them all outside. There'll be movers there with bins and dollies. They're going to grab all your belongings, take them into the building, either walk them up the stairs or into the elevator, and then try to make one stop, uh, one drop and stop in your room to get your items up and then they're gonna move the next family. So um, we'll have maps and guides, parking placards that's gonna have all the important information of which lane you're gonna stay in um, and direct you to the building so that you can offload. Again, we'll have professional movers. Um, again, they do this for a living and they're gonna make sure to, they'll be in red shirts and they're gonna say move in crew. And they'll be the ones that are gonna ensure that your items, your student items make it up to their room um, in a timely manner. Some things um, that I think you need to think about prior to coming is all of our beds are adjustable. They're extra large twin size mattresses. Um, their students love to call them their memory foams, so they're very comfortable. Uh, they all come with carpet, desk chairs, blinds, all of your amenities. And again, all of this information is on our website, uh, the dimensions, floor plans. Uh, what's most important, and I think students will, is in that first week, um, we don't do housekeeping. Uh, housekeeping will not come along, but in the second week is when we usually start that cleaning schedule. So uh, when you move in, your room will be prepared and clean. And then again, you'll be able to see when our housekeepers will enter your space to clean the bathroom areas only of your suite. For some of you who are going to pack quite a few items, um, if you are coming to campus with a U-Haul or a box truck, you will not be allowed to offload in front of your building. We'll have a designated location um, where uh, when you pull in, you'll be directed to uh, park. Uh, what I encourage if you're bringing any of these larger um, vehicles, uh, please provide hand trucks or anything to be able to move those items because due to fire code and the number of traffic, you're not going to be able to, again, offload in front of the building. I also encourage you to do as much shopping prior. You'll have one time to enter uh, the South 40 
uh, to have movers assist you in getting your items to your room. So if you are arriving I would uh, the day before, I would recommend you do your shopping uh, runs uh, that day or before you come to the check-in site to check in and to drive onto the South 40. You'll have access after the move-in is after five o'clock to be able to make multiple runs. But during the time where we have our movers, it's important that you have one, uh, one drop to be able to drop items off and have movers assist you in moving those items up. We also have mailroom service that's available. There'll be many of the items, if you've had them shipped to campus, probably up till now, uh, they will be in your room once you arrive. If not, you'll receive an email notification from the mail center that once you arrive, you'll be able to go down to the mail center and pick those items up. We'll have no long-term parking on the South 40. So once uh, you arrive on the 40, you drop off your items at the drop-off locations. The driver of the car will need to drive to our um, long-term parking facilities. Uh, we're encouraging all families to park at the East End Garage. Um, and then if it overflows, we'll move over to the Danforth Center. But uh, the first stop will definitely be the East End Garage. And there'll be shuttles to be able to shuttle families back over to um, Simon's Lot, where you'll be able to walk over uh, back on to the South 40. And that's the movement experience. We're excited and I look forward to meeting you all once you arrive. So thank you. So I'm gonna provide a little bit of information about fall welcome and parent and family orientation. So I work with student transitions and family programs. Our role is to support our new students and their families as you transition into our community. So that includes our orientation programming that's happened this summer, the communications that you've received, fall welcome and parent and family orientation that'll occur in a little over a week. Um, we also oversee a peer mentorship program called the Washington University Student Associates or WUSAs. Um, for those of you who are on this call who are students, you should have already heard from your WUSA. They stay with you um, as your orientation leader through Fall Welcome, and they're with you through the, your entire first year providing um, academic and social support. We have first year experience programs throughout the, the whole first year of school, including a really exciting program on the first day of classes that we call First Day. Students, you can take a picture at the underpass with a professional photographer. We'll give you a sign to hold that says First Day of College, and um, we'll give you some really fun um, first day of school snacks and some school supplies. Um, it's a really popular tradition on our campus. We took over 3,000 photos last year, and we often now have sophomores, juniors, and seniors who come. So we have signs for all, all years that you're at WashU. Um, and we continue programming like that throughout the first year. We also offer experiences for our sophomores. So even though right now this conversation is for our new students, we'll still be with you as a, a, a second year student at WashU. And then we are the primary um, office to provide resources and supports for parents and families of all undergraduate students. So um, if you're a family member on this call, we are here with you from today until the moment your student graduates. Um, we have colleagues who have other um, department names that have parent in it, like um, the APAP Alumni and Parent Admissions Program through Advancement, and they um, work to help um, find family members who might be willing to be volunteers at some like, college fairs and locations that we're not able to send an admissions counselor to or to do phone calls for families in the summer. Some of you might have gotten one of those calls to do a parent to parent connection. We also have colleagues in parent engagement and advancement that may reach out to see if there's an opportunity for you to be involved in the university um, in another way as a volunteer or philanthropically. But what we're really here to do is to make sure that we can answer all your questions, get you connected to WashU. And if you ever aren't sure who to call, call that you can call us. I mean, we're here, as I said, from now until your student graduates. I'm going to start by giving a brief overview of parent and family orientation. So our parent and family orientation day is going to be on Sunday, August 21st. If you are coming with your student to our campus, whether it's to just drop them off or to stay through some of our experiences, 
please go to families.wustle.edu. You can do it right now um, or as soon as this call is over. And please RSVP for parent and family orientation. We really need to know how many people are coming on campus so that we can be prepared to have enough supplies, food, programming, um, seats in our auditoriums for everyone, or if we need to do a little bit more live streaming. Um, so for those of you who have a student who's checking in on August 19th, um, you'll check in at your designated time that Will spoke about earlier, and then you have the rest of the day to move in and get settled. Just make sure that your student is free and available by 8 p.m. because your student um, and students, you have a residential floor meeting at 8 p.m. the night that you um, move in. So you only go to this floor meeting on the day that you move in. If you're coming in early, like your full varsity athlete, I don't know if any, there are any football uh, students on here or their families, um, you're going to go to that meeting on the 19th as well. On August 20th, there are some special programs welcomes. So for students who are in a named scholarship program like Danforth, Irvin, or Rodriguez, if you're a Deneb star, a TRIO scholar, an international student, or in the Beyond Boundaries program, there are some special program welcomes for you from 5.30 to 7.30 where you hear remarks from senior leadership at the university and then followed by a dinner for you. So that if you're in one of those programs, that may apply to you. And then that evening at 8 p.m. is that residential floor meeting for people who moved in on the 20th. Then our real parent and family orientation day is on Sunday, the 21st. We begin at 9 a.m. with parents as partners. The chancellor will speak. Our vice chancellor for student affairs will give some remarks. And then all of the associate vice chancellors and student affairs will be there to answer questions that um, you may have as family members. And we'll talk about how what resources and supports we provide to your student to help them be successful. And then we'll make sure that um, families have those resources readily, readily available for them as well. And then at 10.45 a.m., the deans of each academic division hold a meeting specifically for families to go over a little bit about their curriculum, what their school or college has to offer and answer your questions. There's a resource fair that takes place between noon and 2 p.m. And then um, for our fall varsity athletes, this isn't on here, but there is a reception for fall varsity athlete families from 2 to 3 p.m. All programming for families ends by 3 p.m. We know that folks need to travel back home. They've got other commitments. Um, and so we want to make sure that you have travel time available. And then um, for those of you who maybe are in St. Louis for the rest of the day and you want to spend a little more time with your student, you want to have dinner together, please make sure that your student's done by 7 p.m. so that they can go to the residential community meeting at 7 that evening. Students have a separate schedule the morning of the 21st. So I've specifically talked about family programming, but students have other commitments on Sunday the 21st. Again, if you only take one takeaway from all of this, please go to families.wistel.edu and RSVP for parent family orientation, particularly if your student's in one of those special programs. We want to make sure we have food for you um, at those dinners. And if you intend to um, participate in parents as partners or one of those dean's meetings, I need to make sure that those are located in spaces where there are enough seats. We also live stream and record the programming that's happening on Sunday the 21st. We know many people aren't able to join their student on campus so they need to get home um, a little more quickly before, you know, can't stay until 3 p.m. on the 21st and that's okay. We'll share all those resources for you later. For the class of 2026, um, you have orientation experiences from Saturday the 20th through Saturday the 27th. Those experiences include um, some of those programs for special populations I just mentioned. Um, there's time to engage with your residential community where you will get to meet your resident advisor, the professional staff member who lives in your residence hall, the faculty family in your residence, um, learn about the community expectations associated with um, common living as well. There are three days that you spend with your academic division. You'll get to learn about the curriculum in your school. You'll meet your four-year academic advisor again. Um, each school does it a little bit differently. So if you're in Sandbox, there's time for you to set up your studio space so that you can be a um, an artist and an architect with some space outside of your room to do your drawings and your sketches. Um, if you're in McKelvey Engineering, they're going to take you into the machine shop and the maker space, and you're going to get to learn um, about the curriculum of each of the different programs within McKelvey. In Olin, there's time to meet with um, their career coaches, the academic advisors, you get a first lecture from the interim dean of Olin. In arts and sciences, if you're in a first year academic program, um, you're going to um, do your first year seminar first class during fall welcome. There's gonna be time for you to hear faculty spotlights from the different kinds of courses we have in humanities and social sciences, in natural science and math. 
Um, they also um, have a little celebration on the quad for you all. And then um, near the end of the week, there's time for students to explore St. Louis with some optional excursions into the community. And we end the week with convocation, which is a university tradition and kickoff for the start of the, the academic year. If we have any transfer and exchange students on this call, you have a slightly shortened schedule. You're with us from Tuesday the 23rd through Sunday the 28th. And your experiences include community socials with just the transfer and exchange community, um, your own academic meetings, because it's a little bit different for the curriculum if you're a transfer student and there's a, another curriculum path if you're an exchange student. And then there's also time to explore St. Louis um, and, and have a dinner in our community, visit the Arch, et cetera. Some of the topics that we're gonna cover during fall welcome um, are academic life um, and the resources to ensure that you're successful, what it's like to live in community, safety and security, health and well-being, diversity and inclusion, um, our focus for WashU to be in, with, and for St. Louis, which is part of that in the Lou St. Louis excursions component, and then also spirit and traditions. Um, for, for those of you on this call who are family members, I really encourage you to have these conversations with your student before uh, you get in the car um, or on the airplane to come to St. Louis. Um, what are your expectations for your student during college um, that maybe are around some of those tougher topics like alcohol, sexual health? Um, those expectations also include about money management, grades, et cetera. Have a plan for communication. You know, we live in this beautiful age where it's really easy to call your family on a cell phone. And it's not a situation um, when I was in college and I did not talk to my parents for six weeks because cell phones were not a thing. And I was not good about using the uh, phone in my room. Um, my parents are still a little upset about <laughs> that with me. But how often are you going to communicate? Who's going to reach out first? Is that a daily text message just as like a proof of life call? Um, are you going to do a weekly FaceTime? call with a family over dinner. Um, does those FaceTime calls include siblings or pets? Sometimes our students are really looking for those. Um, please make sure your student is prepared for independent living. There's still one more week to make sure your student knows how to do laundry, make a quick meal in the microwave, um, you know, clean up their bathroom. While we do have um, weekly bathroom cleaning, I will say that if you have four people using the same bathroom, um, you know, you probably want to wipe down that counter before the next weekly clean, right? And it's it's not a lot. You just need some Lysol wipes, but uh, make sure you, you've thought that through as well. And then the last and maybe the most important thing if you're a family member on this call is think about expectations around sharing information um, regarding grades and academic progress. Students, your academic record is your own. So as a student, you have um, rights under FERPA, which is the federal um, Education Rights and Privacy Act. It's kind of similar to HIPAA. So where your HIPAA protects your medical records, FERPA protects your educational records. So even for students who are under the age of 18, the day they matriculate at WashU, those educational records are their own. Um, and so we do not have a mechanism, nor are we permitted to share the grades and academic progress of our student. And so Please um, think about what that means for you. We know many of our family members are graciously financially supporting their students in college. And so they want to know um, both to be supportive, but also maybe like, hey, I'm paying your tuition bill. I want to see what your grades were that semester. And so please have that conversation with your student now. And then um, action items, please, please do all of the action items on the before you arrive checklist. Um, please, please do all of them. But if you only finish three before you come next week. Make sure you update your immunization and health history forms. You submit a student ID photo. And if you want to participate in those off-campus excursions, register for a UPass. You cannot get your key to your residence hall room without immunization records and having a photo ID, um, like a photo on your student ID. We're not going to give you an ID where there's like a photo of a cat or there's like a no photo at all. Um, so for safety reasons, we need pictures on there. We have to have proof of immunizations for people to live in our residence halls. Um, residence halls are community living. So we want to make sure that people who have vulnerable health conditions um, are protected or there are individuals who can't get immunization. So we need the herd immunity of everyone else to have that. And so please make sure that you have those two things submitted. I really encourage you to um, register for a UPASS so you can participate in those really fun excursions into our St. Louis community. Again, you need to do all of your checklist items, but if you 
you know, only get those three done for now, do the others. Um, but at some point you need to finish the rest because a lot of them, if you don't finish them, they will put a hold on your student account and you won't be able to adjust your course schedule um, when you'll eventually be unable to register for spring classes. Um, and then lastly, make sure you're packing and follow Will's grade instructions that you have your name, your building, uh, and your room number on there. There are lots of great ways to connect um, with residential life and student transitions and family programs. This is our contact information. I know they're going to put it in the chat for you as well, but we are here to answer your questions. We want to make sure you have the resources um, to start on a, a solid footing when you join us in a little over a week. And so we're going to answer your questions live now, um, but sometimes you may have a more nuanced question or something that, you know, um, you want to be able to talk to someone on the phone. This is how you can reach us either by phone or email. Thank you, Catherine. We will, um, for sharing all that information, I have a first question that I know many families may be wondering. How long are family members able to stay on campus during orientation? So we are an open campus. Families can technically stay uh, as much time as they want. However, we recommend that you travel home um, on Sunday, August 21st. Students are going to be really busy beginning the evening of the 21st. And so we want to make sure that families have the ability to get home and manage their other commitments that they have, work, um, you know, family obligations, maybe younger siblings, et cetera. And then we want to make sure that our students can fully zone in on um, fall welcome. So families, you will not have time to see your student beginning on Monday. Thank you, Catherine. We will now move on to the remainder of our question and answer portion of this webinar. Family members, as a reminder, please submit your questions via the Q&A feature. Will, we're going to start with some move-in day and residential life questions. Can you clarify how students can ship items to campus prior to move-in day? Yes, so they can log in to the housing portal and under their assignment, you'll see your mailing address, which we have a MSC number. It's really important that when you mail those items, um, that number is associated with the mailing address. And what will happen is once it's received on campus, your student will receive an email notification sent to their watch you, um, email letting them know that their package has arrived again certain packages the mail service is trying their hardest to put items into rooms but if they're not in the rooms you'll be able to pick them up um, in one of our electronic boxes where they'll receive a passcode and they'll be able to go to the box open it up and grab their item to take back to their room thanks well we have a couple more in the same sort of vein of like mail room question. So when can students collect items from the mail room? So once a student has checked in, their ID will give them 24 access to the mail room's lobby. Again, we have electronic boxes. If it's able to fit in one of the boxes, they have access to it 24 hours a day. If the item is too large, it will be during the mail room hours and those hours are displayed on their website and uh, uh, we'll also make sure to have them available at move-in day uh, so people are aware of when they can go down to the mail room. Awesome. And then is the mail room open only on move-in days um, of the 19th and 20th, or do they have additional hours for some of the other move-in days, like on the 17th or 18th, um, for students who have special circumstances or maybe athletes? We'll be having additional hours for the mail room during the move-in period. Uh, but technically the mail room, again, traditional hours and then some special hours during the move-in day. But again, as a student, if the item is of a certain size, has access to the mail room to pick up those boxes at any time uh, during the evening or day. Students love that convenience because as you know, many of them are in classes. So sometimes to actually go pick up a package maybe at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock at night. Shifting gears a little bit, Catherine, many of our families, including our students, have never been here to campus here at WashU. Um, will there be tours offered during move-in day or throughout Bear Beginnings? Yes, so there are campus tours on both Friday, August 19th and Saturday, uh, August 20th. They happen on the hour from 9 a.m. with the last tour leaving at 4 p.m. Thank you. And then students, um, for students who are on the call, um, there is uh, some programming later in during fall welcome where 
your WUSAs will bring you around to your classroom locations. So uh, we'll make sure that you have um, that version of a campus tour as well. When do meal plans activate for students? All student meal plans will be active beginning um, on Thursday, August 18th. Um, and then many of our students um, had met their, their four-year advisors virtually. Will students have a chance to meet with their four-year advisors during Bear Beginnings Fall Welcome? Yes, every student will meet with their academic advisor during those three academic days that I mentioned. Some students meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, some of them meet in, in group advising settings. Ronaldo and I both actually are also four-year academic advisors in the College of Arts and Sciences, so we'll meet with our students as a group because he and I combined have too many students to meet them hourly um, during that three-day period. We want to make sure they can go to all the other great events Arts and Sciences has. Shifting back to some move-in questions, Will, do those who arrive early follow the same procedures that you had outlined earlier, such as parking at Simon for people who maybe fall athletes, et cetera? Great. No, that's a great question. So um, leading up to the early arrival dates, uh, the students with early arrivals will be receiving communication from Residential Life on how they can pick up their key. Uh, quick answer is no. Uh, for those that are first years arriving early during uh, the early arrival days, you will arrive on the South Florida campus and pick up your key at our Res Life Center. But again, more instructions and information will be sent out to those early arrivals on um, address and parking locations, parking placards and everything once you arrive. Well, so you had mentioned that there are movers who are there to help move the items from um, from down with the students' cars or from those locations up into their rooms. Are families permitted to enter the rooms and help with the unpacking and setting up of the spaces? Yes, we, we definitely encourage it. And actually, I, I just want to make sure I correct. It's, uh, it's moving assistance. Some students come with quite a bit more items. And again, we'll have a couple of movers, again, anywhere between two or three helping, but uh, the families may also have to grab a couple of the bags to be able to get everything up um, in one um, in one swipe uh, going up. But yes, families are the only, um, if you are driving to campus with a vehicle, one family member is going to need to stay in the vehicle once the car is unpacked to move their vehicle to long-term parking. So that one family member will Again, go park the car, take the shuttle back, and then be able to uh, meet their student up in their space to help uh, get them settled in. Right. And then, Will, are there um, different sets of instructions or where can I find additional instructions for those who might be arriving by cab or by ride share such as Uber or Lyft um, on move-in day? Yes, so um, in the communication that uh, student transition and families are gonna be sending out, there'll be a moving guide and it will have the location of where uh, individuals taking Ubers, Lyfts, uh, all of those share ride programs of where they'll park, I mean, where they'll get dropped off to be able to pick up their key. And then again, um, get assistance on getting down to the South 40. The next question that we have, if, if, a, if a family member and a student have a move-in date that is on the 19th, does that student have the option to attend the 8 p.m. residential floor meeting on the next day on the 20th? Why or why not? I'm sorry, Rick. can you repeat that again? Yeah, so if a student's moving in on the 19th, um, they have an 8 p.m. residential floor meeting that night, does that student have the option to attend the residential floor meeting on the following day? I can answer this one well. So a student has the floor meeting on the day they move in. So if you move in on the 19th, you have to go to the floor meeting on the 19th. If you move in on the 20th, you have to go to the meeting on the 20th. If you are a, an athlete or another student with an early arrival and you become you arrive before the 19th, you go to your floor meeting on the 19th for the first time. And the reason we do that is that that floor meeting, you'll get to meet your resident advisor and some of the other people on the floor. But importantly, we cover some really important health um, safety items. Like we talk about where you get your room key if you get locked out in the middle of the night. We for information about our alert system in the buildings in case of emergency. For those of you not from the Midwest, it is still tornado season here. And so um, we want to make sure that students know 
for the safe locations to go in case of emergency. Th tornadoes are incredibly rare, right? I'm not telling that to scare anybody, but we want to make sure that in case of like a fire, or tornado, et cetera, that students know the safe exits um, and locations to, to get themselves out of the building or to like a, um, uh, a secure location in the building during a tornado. Speaking of the 19th and 20th, do students stay overnight starting on their move-in day on Friday the 19th or 20th, or do they stay with their families? What, what does that look like? We recommend that once a student has their key and they've um, unpacked and are settled, that they start um, spending the night in the residential facility. So if they move in on the 19th, we recommend they stay in the residence hall on the 19th. If they move in on the 20th, we recommend they stay on the 20th. I know that um, many families will be here in a hotel and there might be um, a really uh, enticing idea to stay at the hotel room room in one night last night um, with your family, but we really encourage you to stay um, in the residence hall because a lot of community bu building begins after those residential community me uh, meetings. Folks are, you know, um, at the end of the hallway in the lounge, ordering pizza and watching a movie or just chatting. And those are some great opportunities to start meeting your classmates. And so you miss out on those if you're not in the building. Well, we have some questions about some residential living pieces. So are, are double rooms with private bathrooms cleaned by cleaning staff or do students need to clean them themselves? And I know that you had uh, mentioned a little bit about this during your presentation. So all of our first year buildings, um, actually all of our suites, um, if you live in a suite, which all first year students do, have a cleaning schedule where, an individual, where one of our housekeepers will go in, pull trash and uh, clean the bathroom. Speaking of trash, do students need to bring their own trash bags and trash bins? Um, so we provide recycling um, trash cans for each of the rooms. Um, we also offer um, uh, composting. Uh, if students want to sign up for that, they can do that also in their rooms. Um, and I think we have trash rooms, we do, I'm sorry, we have trash rooms on each of the floors. So students are encouraged to take their trash. So if you wanna buy your student a small trash can to collect trash in the room, um, I would encourage, uh, but outside of that, they can, um, again, have trash rooms uh, down the hall, um, even recycling where they can tear down boxes. And again, each morning housekeeping goes through checks the trash rooms and uh, takes the trash out. So, yeah. Um, and then in terms of the, the physical space, well, we have some folks who are asking questions is if, if there's a place that gives dimensions of furniture in the residence halls, for example, we have some people who are asking how much space is under the bed for storage. So um, we probably don't have the exact dimensions, but I will tell you um, the beds all could all rise as high enough where the dresser that comes along in the room or even the desk can be slid under slid under the, the bed itself. And what I see a lot of students do, the plastic bins are very popular. Uh, students will slide many of those items, potentially even a micro fridge underneath the bed. So um, I, uh, if I'm six, three, uh, if there's enough storage to probably meet up to my stomach line, up to my chest, if you raise the bed all the way that high. So I don't think uh, you all are gonna worry about uh, storage space. And many of the spaces also come with closets. Catherine, uh, shifting gears a little bit, can you share more about convocation um, that takes place at the end of Bear Beginnings Fall Welcome? Certainly. So convocation is a longstanding university tradition to kick off the official start of our academic year. It's hosted by our chancellor and includes some really wonderful speeches by our chancellor, our vice chancellor for student affairs, and a senior student. Um, I will say that when Ronaldo was an undergraduate student here many years ago, he was the convocation speaker for, I think, the class of 2018. Did I get that right? Um, and so uh, all the speeches are wonderful. I will say that most of our students remember their, their senior student speaker uh, the best. But that program is specifically for our students. Families are invited to participate from the comfort of their homes watching the live stream. Speaking of live streams, what events will be live streamed and how can family members watch them? And or are there opportunities to watch um, the... Uh, some of the parent and family orientation sessions after the facts, are they recorded? What is uh, what is the access there? Certainly. So we live stream parents as partners, which is that session I mentioned that starts um, 
early on Sunday, August 21st, where our chancellor speaks, our vice chancellor for student affairs, and then we answer questions. Um, that one is live streamed. The dean's meetings are recorded, and that's because they're in multiple locations, and we do not yet have the technology to live stream from four locations on our campus. Um, and so we will record, um, we will live stream and record that parents as partner session. We will record those dean's meetings for families. Um, so you can watch live parents as partners as you want, and then you can watch a recording of any and all of the sessions. And they're available about a week after the event. And the reason it takes us a week is because we send the video off to a professional transcription service before we can post it, because we have to have captions on the video before we can post it. Catherine, can you share more about what to expect from the resource fair that takes place on Sunday? Sure. So our colleagues from across campus, every department in student affairs and many of um, our close colleagues and friends and uh, departments like dining services, the teaching and learning center, the writing center and speaking studio, parking and transportation, um, athletics and recreation, residential life. Um, we are all present to um, provide some resources as handouts and to answer questions that folks have. Um, I would say probably about 75% of our students and families choose to walk through the resource fair. Um, some folks just kind of pass by um, tables and grab something if it catches their eye. And other people use that as an opportunity if they have a question that they really want to ask someone in person. It's a way that you can do that without having to send an email or a phone call. Will, I have some really rapid questions about mostly refrigerators. Uh, what size refrigerators are allowed in the room? Oh, gosh, I knew you would ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, um, I, I believe it's four cubic feet. And again, we're not asking for full sizes. It is a standard size um, mini fridge. And again, our the information is on the website. So if you click on that and also in the moving guide, that defines the size of the refrigerator. Great. And families, we will make sure that that gets posted just here in a second in the chat once again. Um, will, for folks who rented refrigerators and microwaves, will those be in the room when students arrive? Uh, yes. Uh, for the most part, if you rented them through uh, U-Trucking, uh, those items will be, uh, yes, more likely in the room prior to your arriving. If not, they'll arrive once you have checked in. There'll probably be someone delivering the item to the room. And then lastly, Will and Catherine, can you talk about where students may be able to get refrigerators or other appliances or things that they may want for their rooms? Yes, so we have a student run group called SWAP and uh, they will have a setup on Saturday where uh, in the uh, grassy area, they'll have all their items near the basketball court laid out. And it's kind of like going to, I guess, a flea market. <laughs> and these are items that have been passed down from other students. Um, and again, they are discounted. So they're at an affordable rate. Um, I encourage you, the families, to support them. They have everything from appliances to hangers to uh, shower caddies. You name it, they're probably a student who's donated it for the next student to be able to, you know, uh, purchase the item. Um, and then, Will, do cleaning services, when, when, when housekeepers come in, do they provide toilet paper? Is that something that... that uh, students need to purchase themselves. No, so we do provide toilet paper. Uh, that will actually, um, they'll change, they'll be checking and changing those out pretty regularly for students. Um, but I will tell you, some families, if you, uh, you know, you grew up in a certain household, you like certain softness. I think our toilet paper is soft. We get good reviews from it from students, but uh, students are also encouraged to use any other of their products they would like to bring along. <laughs> Catherine, is there a way that students can make sure that all of their checklist items, so the before you arrive checklist items have been completed and received? So this is an excellent question. I'm going to start it by saying that Washington University is getting a new student information system in 2025. Um, none of our systems talk to each other because we have this had this really advanced system that we made ourselves in 1979. I'm not making up that year. Um, and we integrate 142 different 
systems into our student information system. That will not be the case in 2025, but there's actually not a centralized way a student needs to track on their own what their, their progress is. Um, if a student has not done something, they have likely received one or more reminder. Um, you definitely received a reminder, a reminder if you have not completed your immunization records. A way you can check to see if you've submitted a student ID photo is that if you go into your WebStack account and there's a picture of you, then we have your photo. If there is just a little box that says no photo submitted, then we do not have a picture of you. Catherine, can you speak more about uh, HIPAA and FERPA policies? You had mentioned them a little bit earlier. Um, are there any forms or things that students need to fill out in regards to these um, ahead of time? Certainly. So. Um... FERPA, again, is the Federal Education Rights and Privacy Act that protect all students' um, educational records. There is not a form at this time at, at our university for students to consent to release their information. That really relates, again, to that I just said we have a... a, a um, aging student information system. We are working on a process, but as of today on August 11th, it's not available. So a student is the only individual who has access to their records and needs to share that information with a family member if there's a, an expectation to do so there. Um, HIPAA, as most of us know, um, re refers to the um, protection of health records. It, it stands for health insurance, portability, and Accountability Act, but most of it think of, of it as when you go to the doctor, they ask you, like, do you want to, you know, give your records to anyone else? Um, if a student would like to release their medical records to a family member, they can go to the Habith Health and Wellness Center in person and sign a release. That release um, typically expires after six months. Part of the reason that we have our students sign that release in person is to ensure that someone can have a conversation with them, make sure they know which boxes are checking, right? Like, I want to receive emails. I want to receive things in my portal. I want you to, you know, share my records with a family member or my sibling or, you know, my, my best friend whatever that looks like. Um, and it does expire because we have found that many of our college students have changing um, expectations with families about what you do and do not share. It's kind of like at some point your pediatrician tells your parents to go sit in the, the living room or the, the living room, the waiting room, even though um, you might still be a minor. And so we want our students to be thinking about that frequently as well. Um, some families may have worked with a private attorney or um, others to create a um, health directive or a power of attorney. If you have those documents, you should keep them yourself the same way you would right now in case of emergency. Um, those documents are typically utilized if um, in case of emergency and someone's um, unable to make decisions for themselves. And so you should just keep that documentation the way you have it now. And I hope that you never have to use it. Pivoting a little bit, um, we're going to move into some questions, a series of questions that are around food um, and dining. Um, so Catherine, you had mentioned that students have their own schedule on Sunday, August 21st. Should families expect to see them or eat with them Sunday morning for breakfast and at what time? So if a student and a family wants to have breakfast together, they're going to, um, the student's first event, hold on, let me look because I don't want to mess up my time zones here. Um, a student's first event is at 9, 9.30 a.m. Um, Central Time on Sunday, August 21st. Um, family members who are attending parents as partners, that's at 9 a.m. And so depending on if you're going to parents as partners or not, you want to have a pretty early breakfast, um, you know, probably 7.30 or 8 in the morning. Will the dining halls be open during move-in days and fall welcome? Yes, yeah, so our, our, our dining facilities um, are even open now. The hours are, you know, reduced today on August 11th and then expand to, you know, like hours when I am asleep, like 11 p.m. to <laughs> and midnight once the students get back. Our dining hours, the locations and menus for those um, dining facilities can be found on diningservices.wistel.edu. So you had mentioned that um, during the check-in process that students receive their student ID during the, the move-in check-in process. Do they receive a meal card? How do they access their meal plan? A student's meal plan is accessed through their student ID. So as soon as they pick up that student ID at check-in, they then have access to their meal plan. Thank you. Um, well, we have some folks who are asking how and when do students get their room numbers? So their room numbers are live on the housing portal. So if they click on, once you log in through WebStack, click on the housing portal. Um, at the assignment page, when they click in, it will have their address with uh, their assignment. 
with also their roommate's assignment. So all of that information is on here at the assignments page. Thank you. Um, well, how far away is the long-term parking from the residence halls, um, which are on the South 40? Um, and then I have a follow-up to that. Yes, so the uh, parking garage is at our newly uh, great spot called the East End. Um, and I encourage all the families when you're doing a tour and walking around with your students to check out the campus. Uh, you feel like you're, I, I feel like you're in the middle of these see like uh, all the smithsonians and all that stuff it's a beautiful part of campus so uh it's an underground parking garage it's the nicest you'll ever be in for, i'll be honest and then there's a shuttle so uh the walk if you were to walk it i would say it would be a 10 to 15 minute walk or again on a shuttle it'll take less than five minutes my follow-up was uh what time does the shuttle run um the shuttle will start as early as eight o'clock uh, when we first start with the check-in experience and it will run probably uh, uh, probably throughout the whole day um, while families are on campus. So there'll be plenty of um, opportunities if people need the assistance. Well, you'd mentioned a little bit about raising the beds. Um, can you talk about how bed lofting works do students need to request that their bed is lofted prior to move in or do they do them themselves? So we do not provide lofting kits. Students can um, loft their beds themselves. Our beds are all universal. So you're able to usually by two people be able to lift the bed. But if you really want to, you can put in a request through maintenance. We can't guarantee it will be that day, but at some point, um, probably within 48 hours, um, a member from our facility team will come and assist in lowering or, raise, or raising a bed if need be. But most students we find like the bed raised because they want to be able to maximize the amount of storage um, and space in the room. Catherine, we have some questions. Um, if, if families are unable to reach their child, so you talked a little bit about like communication expectations. If a family member uh, sets that communi communication expectation and then finds that they cannot reach their students, is there any way for that family member to connect the, with the university around emergency assistance? So, um, you know, if a family member is concerned about their student, like you have a belief that um, they might be a danger to themselves or you have not heard from them in you know, a significant period of time, the same way that you in your hometown might file a missing persons report, you can contact the Washington University Police Department to do um, a well-being check. Now, the police department is going because it, it is, our police department is a full um, accredited, licensed, and deputized police department in St. Louis County. They're going to ask you the same questions that you would get if you called your local police station. So they're going to ask you the length of time it's been, why you have a concern. So um, I'm going to use a silly example, but you know, like if I hadn't heard from my student um, and it had been like an hour um, when I'd normally like get a text from them by 9 a.m. and it's 10 a.m., they're not going to likely do a well-being check for them. But if I again have um, concerns about my student. Um, you know, their personal safety, um, where we think someone else or they might harm themselves, they're going to go check. Or if you haven't, you know, heard from them for, for several days, they're going to go check as well. So the Washington University, University Police Department is a way to do an emergency well-being check. Uh, the other thing I will say, though, is we know that our families, like, you know your students best. And so if you have a concern about your student and you're, you're just, it's been a couple of weeks and you just think like, you know, they seem really off there. Um, they seem depressed. They are saying things that are concerning to me, but you don't have an immediate concern where you need to call the police. You can either contact our office or a department called Wash You Cares, and you can file a Wash You Cares report, and we will have um, someone follow up to make sure that your student is doing okay. And that's just, that's different than one of those well-being checks. Those well-being checks are emergent issues that we use the police department um, the same way you would, like I said, if you had a missing person's report to file um, at home. And then we, through either Wash You Cares or starting with our office, can talk to you if you have um, some other concerns that are not as emergent, but you want to make sure that your student's getting the resources that they need. Sometimes when you call us with that information, we can provide you with just resources to share with your student. Like, you know, hey, you should consider going to see um, someone in the mental health services area or use, we have an app called Timely Care that can do um, 
virtual mental health appointments, or, you know, you think what your student really just needs is like um, to get some more sleep. And we can talk to you about some resources to share with your student about that. Uh, we can do that, or it can be that, you know, we need to have someone check in on your student, but again, not in an emergent situation. Catherine, who should students get in touch with if they need accommodations during their beginnings and or has that already happened? So if a student needs ongoing accommodations um, for an accessibility or an academic reason, they should work through disability resources. If um, a family member or a student needs something specifically for fall welcome, they can contact um, our office. We do typically ask for 14 days in advance notice to make sure that we can meet those accommodations. But if you can email us today, we'll do our very best. Um, some common things that people might need as an accommodation might include um, a sign language interpreter um, to make sure that we're, they're in a room where we have a microphone so you can um, tune in with a hearing aid. It might mean that they need some materials provided in print, et cetera. And then we do our best to meet all those accommodations. Will, I have some move-in questions for you. Can families and students come with multiple cars for move-in day? Yes, but <laughs> we really is it recommended. <laughs> it is not recommended. Uh, we really would encourage if you are coming in multiple cars that the, you park one car with many of the items. Again, we have over a thousand students each day moving in. We're going to have multiple cars. Again, I, I reiterate, we really do not show up before your arrival, your students' arrival time to check in. This is to make sure you have a smooth experience to be able to not wait in a long line. Um, I would encourage the individuals that are coming along in the extra car to park in long-term parking and then to come down to meet with the family, with the student moving in. But um, I understand in some cases, some students are going to come with multiple people, uh, but we really encourage to pack one car with the belongings that will access uh, the South 40 and have the movers be able to get those up. Um, Will, if, if my check-in time is on Friday, August 19th, am I able to continue moving in items on Saturday all day or only after 5 p.m.? Only after 5 p.m because okay. there will be another thousand or 800-ish students checking in. So it will be, if, you, if you're moving in on the 19th, uh, once you enter on the 40, you will have to wait until after 5 p.m. to access the South 40 with the vehicle. We will have parking placards that will determine on which day you're able to enter. So again, long-term parking would be where the family would need to park and then take the shuttle to get back down to the South 40. Will the professional moving assistants help me multiple times or only during that first drop-off? Only during the first drop-off. So again, I highly encourage you to do the shopping, do anything you would need assistance with that's gonna be heavy um, in this one um, drop-off that you have. Catherine, what should students and families do during the day on Saturday if they're moving in on Friday or alternatively if they move early on during the day on Saturday, what do they do with the rest of their day? Sure, um, you know, so help to get your student unpacked and settled. Um, if you've traveled um, to St. Louis in a car, you may want to do a little exploring in St. Louis. Some folks want to try some of our great local restaurants. Uh, St. Louis is a, a sneaky foodie town. I think people don't think of us that way, but we have really great restaurants and local businesses. Um, some folks will, will choose to make an extra um, run to Walmart or Target or Ikea, which is located really close to campus. Um, and then others just, you know, make a determination if they, they have that Friday move in, they may say, you know what, we're actually going to travel home on Saturday and then we'll watch the recordings of the parent and family orientation programs. But there's nothing um, specifically expected or required. If I'm looking for recommendations for shopping or dining, where should I go? So on Monday, every new student and family are going to get another email from our office with a last minute reminder with all the stuff we covered today and some other um, final items. And there will be um, a link to a local shopping guide um, with some of the, the big box stores in the area and common places that our students have told us that they shop. And then um, there is a list of like more than 50 local restaurants that was curated by our students. Great. If there are um, students who need to get vaccinations at Habit Health and Wellness once they arrive to campus, will they still be able to move in? 
what does that look like? So uh, Habith will be at the check-in center and we'll have a clinic set up at our check-in site. So if there are certain vaccinations that a student needs to receive, uh, they'll be able to receive it um, prior to checking in. We are going to ask one last question for the evening. Panelists, thank you so much for the information that you've shared tonight. What piece of advice do you have for our new students and their family members leading up to move-in day and bare beginnings fall welcome? I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> My biggest advice, uh, parents, is um, pack once, unpack, and take some items out. <laughs> We don't need everything in this first week because you have to remember, you're going to come to campus, they're going to shop in our bookstores, shop in our stores, they're going to be wearing washi swag. Don't pack everything at once. Your student's going to come home, there'll be things that they can bring back. I, again, I always say pack some, but then take something out because uh, you have to come back and either pick it up also. So <laughs> uh, they always say parents come with a whole lot more. Well, they cut, they, when it's time to move out, then that's when you need the two vehicles of the amount of stuff that the, your student has collected in their first year. Um, I mean, I think my biggest piece of advice is just to spend this next week uh, with your with your family. You know, um, I, I really want everyone to submit an ID photo. I really want you all to do your immunization records. Uh, I would like most of you to get a U-Pass so you can go do these St. Louis excursions. But um, time with family and friends is precious. And so spend some time um, with your loved ones and uh, get some extra sleep. Because while there is plenty of time to sleep during fall walk, um, I found that students stay up a little late because they're meeting their new friends. Panelists, thank you so much again. Families, we hope you were able to learn some valuable information this evening. As a reminder, this webinar recording will be shared at families.wustel.edu next week. Please stay tuned for our fall family webinar series that will be coming out soon. Topics and dates will be released at our website, families.wustel.edu. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you soon.